I'ma get with y'all when I get back, man. We gonna play some space when I get back. I'm going up top, visitation. Wifey and the kids is here. I'll be back, man. This is crazy, bro. Wifey done found a code to my Facebook. She done went through all my messages from day one when I first started the page, man. She say she done with me, man. She say she can't do it no longer. She found out about the side chick. She found out about all the other females. She say she's done with me, man. You for real? I mean, I know you told me you done. I told you I was sorry. I didn't mean it like I told you them other females didn't mean nothing to me. You ain't been down here in three weeks, man. For real? This is what we doing? This is what we doing? It took you over a month to come back down here to see me. You know what it is when I come home. You think a dude's gonna be walking around my house in his boxes around my four kids? If I can't have you, ain't nobody gonna have you. And like I said, when I come home, you know what it is. Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Kids TV in the house like motherfucking kitchen sinks. I got a treat for you all today. I got a big treat for you all this afternoon. One time for your mind, one time for your mizan. Oh yeah, it's going down. Get your popcorn ready like uh, uh, T.O. once uh, famously said. If you're riding on the road, strap up, get your seatbelt on, which you should have it on anyway. Now before we get into uh, this afternoon's video, if you will, I'm the self-proclaimed. Mr. 30 Minutes or Better, meaning that all my videos are guaranteed to be at least 30 minutes long. So if you're on your way to work, if you're at work, you just don't feel like being there, they're getting on your nerves, you're trying to drown everybody out, you want to put on your, your headphones or your earbuds, whatever the case may be, your boss is getting on your motherfucking nerves, or you're on your way from work. Perhaps you're trying to lay down and take a nap or go to sleep at night, depending on whatever time that you happen to uh, watch this video. Maybe you need to cry, maybe you need to laugh. Well, hell, maybe you're just in the mood for a good old-fashioned, real penitentiary story. This is the channel for you. Now, with all of those things being said, there is a message. You know, back in the day, man, you know, when I was doing my time, uh, my dirt or what have you, I spent a lot of time uh, in the confines, if you will, of the Department of Corrections. Roughly about 11 years. So this particular situation that occurred... It started out with me being in the pen, me and the big homie. And that's why I'm going to refer to him, to him as the big homie. Hell, oftentimes that's what I called him anyway, the big homie. The big homie, he was weighing in. Had to have been about 265, 275, uh, dark-skinned brother. Um, he had like a little short afro uh wore glasses. He was probably, I say he's about 5'11", roughly 5'11", six feet, somewhere, six foot, somewhere right around there. He wasn't too tall, but he wasn't short either. Big, strong gorilla, man, in the weight pile, man. I'm talking about he takes 315s and hits it for sets of 10s, five sets of 10s. He was a gorilla, man. He was a monster. So, me and the big homie, man, we would often, you know, we, we would go back and forth as far as, like, we would, uh, we would play chess against each other. Whenever we would play spades or dominoes, he'd have his squad, I'd have my squad. You know, we were very, very competitive towards each other, but that was my dude, that was my dog. Man. You know what I'm saying? That, that was just, that's just what it was. The big homie man was very, very blessed. He wasn't married, but he referred to, to his, um, his, to his girlfriend as wifey. They had been together at this point, maybe, 13, 14 years, and they had four kids, and they were, like, all close in age, like, maybe at the time, I'm thinking six, eight, and then they had a set, you know, they had twins, they were probably, like, ten, so that's how close in age they all were. One thing about being in prison, for you all that's never been to prison, that's a great thing if you've never been to prison, when you go to prison, there's not much that you have to look forward to. You look forward to uh, getting on the phone, having somebody accept that call for you, going to commissary, that's a beautiful thing, on commissary day, and visitation, and of course being released. It goes without being said. But for the most part, those are the main things that you really, really have to look forward to in prison. Big homie, man, like I said, he was just blessed. His, his girl, we're just going to say his wifey. 
man, she showed up anytime them doors was open. They popped them doors open. She was there. Now, in prison in Kentucky anyway, visitations are Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m., 3 p.m. Every Saturday, every Sunday, she was there. She would get there at about, he would tell her to come at about 12, 15, 12, 30, because you get a minimum of two hours on visit. Well, visits ending at 3 o'clock, if she showed up at 12, 15, 12, 30, she's going to be able to rock all the way out until, you know, about 2, 50, 2, 55. That's what time they kind of start to wind things down or what have you and, and shut visitation down. So she would always come at that time because he told her that he had a job in the morning. So never come earlier than that because he would be, you know, working his job. And we'll get to uh, that part in the latter stages of the video. Rock with me. Kind of hot outside today. And so, like I mentioned, every single weekend, he would go up top. He would go on visit. And also, they have visits on special holidays. Special holidays was, uh, let's see, you got Memorial Day. You got the 4th of July. You got Labor Day. You got, obviously, Christmas. Thanksgiving, New Year's. So even though visitation was on Saturday and Sunday, let's just say Christmas fell on a, fell on a Thursday. They're going to have visitation on Wednesday, which is Christmas Eve, obviously. Thursday, Christmas. And they're going to have visit on Friday. And then your Saturday and Sunday. She's there every single time. She's going to bring the kids one time, and then she's going to come by herself so that they can have them some, you know, us time. She's sending money every week. $50, $60, put $30, $40 on the phone, $30, $40 on the phone because the phone calls are like $2 a call. So he was able to call home, you know, every other day he calls. Sometimes he call every day or what have you, just to hear a voice, just to be able to, you know, chat with the kids and whatnot. Everything that you could possibly want in prison he had. Had his own TV, CD player, uh, the maximum allowed of CDs that you could have. Three jogging suits, that's the most that you can, you know, legally have. He got three or four different pair of uh, brand new tennis shoes. He got all the t-shirts, the, the fancy t-shirts, the shorts. The uh, Y'all know, you all that's been in prison and in jail, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The thermals, everything that you can have, he had. The hot pot, the cooler. Really didn't have to leave his cell for much. He was in an actual cell. All of these things was based upon... Wifey taking care of him. Great situation. Not to mention that when she came to visit him, they have vending machines. So on the vending machines, you know, you, you were only allowed to bring quarters in. So if they catch you bringing dollars, like any sort of paper money, immediate termination. And you may lose your visitation rights for several, several months. So she would bring, you know, 20 25 $30 in quarters. He's a big dude. As I mentioned, he's about 265, 275. Big dude. And so, you know, she would go to the vending machines. He may say, hey, baby, grab me a pizza. Give me a uh, one of them motherfucking uh, double cheeseburgers. Give me a, a, a Mountain Dew, a Snickers bar, and um, bag him chips. Well, all of that adds up quickly. It may be 10, 12 bucks right there, probably more. But she wanted her man to eat well while on visitation. Then they may decide to go and take a picture. You can take pictures. They cost money. So all of these things, she's doing everything that she could do to make sure that her man is straight. I don't know what uh, prompted her to do this, but somehow she ended up finding out his code to his Facebook. Y'all see where I'm going with this? I don't know what made her go through that, but she did it. Every message he had ever sent was still on Facebook, in his inbox. He never erased anything. Perhaps he didn't know that she would, you know, stoop to this level. I don't even want to say stoop to this level. But perhaps he just didn't understand that women, and I say this respectfully, are private investigators. If you're doing something, man, they're going to find out. Don't ever think that you're just getting uh, getting over on a woman. She's going to find out. Every single message. She confronts him with it. But she does it like a lady. She actually comes down there to visitation. 
And I never will forget because I was on visit that day. And we were sitting, you know, relatively close to their table because they have like little tables set up. So, you know, we were sitting kind of close to the table and she's confronting him with these messages, all of these messages, all these different women that he's been corresponding with. He finds out about one particular woman. She finds out rather that not only has he just been sneaking off with, it seems as though they have a whole relationship going on the side. But yet this woman knows about her wifey. He's trying to explain to her, baby, it ain't even like it. Why you bringing it? You know, guys, we'll flip things in a heartbeat. Man, you, you wait until I'm in here to bring this up. I understand I was wrong. I understand. But dang, this ain't the right time, baby. I mean, it was then. This is now. It's us. It's me and you, baby. And, oh, I mean, they, shit, they don't mean nothing to me. It was just fun, recreation, it, nothing. She didn't feel that way. Clarice, that's her name, Clarice. Clarice didn't feel that way whatsoever, and she found nothing humorous about the situation. From that point on, she tells him, uh, you know, I just think that we need to back up and, and just, you know, concentrate on the kids and be friends because I don't trust you and, and I can't be doing all these things for you. Not, not knowing that you and I are secure in our relationship. I've been telling you I want to get married. We've been together all these years. We haven't gotten married. I just don't see us really going any further. The big homie's crushed, man. The big homie has never had his girl approach him like this and say the things that she's saying to him. He don't know how to take it, baby. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I, I don't mean it. I apologize. We're going to work on this. Just come back. Come back tomorrow and we're going to talk it out and we're going to you know, do whatever we need to do. Those girls, like I said, they don't mean nothing to me. I cut all of that off for you, baby. We're going to get married when I get out. The big homie had been locked up at this point, I want to say, a couple years. Women get lonely when, when we go to prison, guys. It's one thing to go to jail for a couple weeks, a couple months. They get lonely then. But some years, when years are involved, they definitely get lonely. And so when they see something like this and, and guys are constantly approaching them and, and shooting at them and trying to get at them and then their girlfriends, girl, why are you waiting on this dude in prison? He don't do nothing but cheat on you. Here, I got a nice guy you can meet. We can all double date or you all can hook up and go do your thing, whatever. All of these pressures, all of these things are being presented to that woman that's holding you down while you locked up in prison. But yet, she still loves your dirty drawers. Well, this particular instance, and, and I'm and I'm guessing that before they've had infidelity issues. And so at this point, I believe Clarice, she was just fed up. She tells him, now, nah, we're just going to concentrate on the kids and, and you and I, we, you know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. You could tell he's kind of crushed, man, coming back to the dorm. He's crushed. The love of my life just broke up with me she's never broken up with me she tells me that it's over here i am locked up in penitentiary and she tells me that it's over you know guys we real real uh uh selfish at times oftentimes she gonna play me like that she think this is a game yeah she'll be back i ain't worried about nothing she'll be back next day comes she don't show up for visit he's heated he's calling she won't answer the phone calling no answer next week visitation comes she don't show up again saturday sunday she don't show up he's blowing her phone up she's not answering at some point she ends up answering the phone but it got to the point to where when she answered she wasn't even answering she was you know doing the proper uh, prompts please press five to accept and she'll press five and get the phone to one of the kids and then the, you know they'll pass it back uh, uh to each other or amongst each other what have you so they could all talk to their father he would talk to the kids hey how you doing you minding your mama you doing what you're supposed to do okay let me speak to it then he'd speak to the other kid and you know okay put your mama on the phone she get on the phone yeah why you ain't been down here listen i told you tell them other hoes that was in your inbox to come down there Tell the one that you with 
on the side all them nights you wasn't coming home and you was gone for two and three days and I was calling your phone and texting you and you wouldn't uh, answer my text, tell her to come and see you. Click. That was her disposition. Now, she could have just been writing because she didn't have to accept the call at all. Luckily, his mother was very, um, you know, she was into the kids' lives or what have you. And so she would bring the kids to come and see him. So he never really lost uh, camaraderie or, or contact, if you will, with the kids because his mother, based on the fact that she allowed her his mother to come and get the kids, to bring the kids to come and see him, you see what I'm saying? Like he he was uh, he was afforded that solely because she just wasn't a nasty individual. I seen his whole demeanor change. Now the money slowed down. She ain't sending no more money at this point. Now he got a brother that's in the streets. He hustles, but you know how that is. That's when you can reach him. But his brother he came through for him. He sent him two or three hundred, two or three hundred at a time. But he wasn't like no every week type thing. You know, maybe once a month, once, you know, every five, six weeks, he sent him, you know, two or three hundred. So he stayed afloat. He stayed alive. He wasn't in there starving. Then his other girl that I mentioned, she was sending thirty, forty dollars a week. She was coming to see him. That's why if you paying attention earlier, I said he would always tell his girl, his wifey to come at 12, 15, 12, 30. Because his other girl would come from 9 a.m. to 11. So he didn't want the two to actually running to each other now the other girl on the side we're gonna call her the side chick she knew about wifey so it really wasn't even a big issue she knew everything that was going down but what was so crazy about that he really considered the side chick his other girl i never will forget he tells me one time that he finds out that the side chick is kicking him with a dude he bloops out you got this dude up in the crib well, you got a whole family over here. I don't care. Don't have no dudes in this crib. Take your glasses off. Take my glasses off. Take your glasses off. Anytime he told her to take her glasses off, he's going to slap her. I used to be like, come on, uh, big homie, man. You can't be putting your hands on women, man. Nah, she going she gonna to listen to what I say. He said, I ain't have to do it often. But if I tell you take him glasses off, you know what's going to go down. I don't agree with that at all. Zero percent. I've never put my hands on a woman. Never. Never will. It's not my thing. It's not my MO. But hey, to each his own. And so, you know, these things continue to, to go on and go on. The big homie got a, a, a best friend. Him and his dog came up. They came up from, from childhood friends, man. You know what I'm saying? Five five, six years old, they remain friends. I'm going to call him Jody. I'm going to call him Jody. He looked out for him. He would go to the house, and this is how close they were. He would go to the house and make sure that the kids got the football practice, and, you know, if they needed something, he, you know, come over and cut the grass. Just do little things that Clarice, his wife, was accustomed to him doing. Or him paying somebody to come and do some of the things that, you know, needed to be done around the house, on the outside of the house. He trusted Jody. Now, first of all, you trust a dude with the name of Jody. I'm sure you all know who Jody is. And if you don't know who the infamous Jody is, just look it up. Urban Dictionary. Who is Jody? <laughs> Jody's coming over, like I said, just helping out, just helping the family out. He's sending the big homie money, you know, from time to time. Jody's in them streets, but he also has a job, too. Kind of one foot in, one foot out. You know, he's working, but he's still getting his money in the streets. He's telling Jody, man, wife, he's tripping, man. She, you know, she found out about old girl. and She's seen some messages or whatever. It's not even that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? I told her, but, you know, fellas, whenever we get caught up, we it's not even that big of a deal, man. What are you tripping for, man? You know, that's, that's really our demeanor. And we really sound ignorant. Me included. I've been caught up multiple times. I don't do those things anymore. But, you know, when I was younger, I thought that it was cool. A lot of us, not all of us. I stress, not all of us. But a lot of us think that it's cool to have women on the side. We think that, shoot, man, I got this one, I got that one. 
and really it's not because you're playing with an individual's heart and you could really really hurt somebody and damage somebody along with get yourself hurt emotionally and physically you run across the right person and you wrong the right person and so you know the two of them they would interact over the phone but it just never really went back to being the same Clarice started to come back around a little bit she started to come back around but it was never how it initially was if I can make it down there I'm gonna make it if I can't I can't that was her disposition he's not feeling that at all he does not like this part of her this side of her because he's never seen this side of her the 13 years that they've been together she always anything that he needed anything that he said anything that she was there she just did it never cheated Nothing like that. At this point, he still had about another year left. Baby, I only got a year left. Come on, let's work this out, man. But see, oftentimes we'll say only a year. That's a long time. That's a long time. Another year? She's already been rocking with you for two years. And she had no problem doing everything that she did. And to come find these, you know, horrific things out that she found out and seen. But she tries. She hangs in there. It just never really, it was just never really right at that point. Anytime she didn't answer the phone, anytime she didn't show up for visit, B, where you B were? B, where you been at? You better not have no dudes around my kids. Let me find out. I always going through it over the phone. When she did come and visit, she's crying out on visits sometimes, not all the time, because they just argued and argued and argued. He just automatically felt as though she's doing something. You've caught me doing something. But now you got to be doing something. Why is it taking you four or five rings before you answer the call? Who's that in the background? I heard something. I know I you bet not let me find out nobody's over there. Now you done mess with 167 girls. <laughs> but you're concerned with one dude. Again, that's how a lot of us guys are. So it gets to the point to where she's just like, you know what? I'm just, I'm, no, I, I, I can't. I can't. You know, when a woman, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. I tried. I can't do it. Okay, cool. F you then. So now he's focusing on the other female, the side chick. She's going to be his new boo, his new boo Y'all make sure y'all like the video. If you like it so far, like the video, comment, anything. Just let me know that you're here. Let me know that you that you in the house like kitchen sinks at this point of the video. So he's focusing on the side chick, but it's not the same. You know, he loves her. He loves the side chick, but he really, really loves wifey. This particular time, an interesting twist, uh, uh, comes into the fold something that you rarely ever see in the department of corrections the department of corrections is so crowded they start doing random early releases the governor signs a bill in which x amount of inmates throughout x amount of months i believe like six months will be released oh man guys is excited me, I wasn't, because I had so much time left on my sentence. I knew they weren't going to release me early. But it was for the guys that was closer to uh, completing their sentences. The big homie had, I don't know, at this point, maybe 10 months left on his sentence. He's excited. There's a possibility that he could go home early. He started just seeing random people being called up to administration. Once they call your name, call you to administration, you know you can already go home. As long as you got a, a somewhere to go, then you gone. You out of there. Now, if you was close to serving out, they didn't even make you turn in a home placement. You could just go. You got a ride. How your people come up here today? How your people come up here tomorrow? Big homie, man. He's excited, but they haven't called his name yet. He's seen maybe 50 or 60 people get released. And he was like, I got to be on, on that list. I got to be in that category. I only got 10 months left. I'm nonviolent. 
It's a non-sexual crime. They got to let me go soon. Lo and behold, big homie, report to administration. Big homie, report to administration. Big homie flies to administration. Release papers. You going home tomorrow. It's on a Thursday. You going home tomorrow on that Friday. Oh, man, he's ecstatic. He's happy, man. He calls, he calls Jody. He can't get a hold of Jody. He's trying to tell Jody to pick him up, man. He can't get a hold of Jody. Man, I wonder what's going on. Now, something that I failed to mention, I failed to mention this. During the time that uh, he was going through it with his wife, big homie and Clarice, his youngest daughter, you know, kids would say the darnest things. His youngest daughter said um, on visitation when his mother, big homie's mother, brought the kids to see him. I seen mommy kissing uh, uh, Uncle Jody. I said, what? I seen mommy kissing Uncle Jody. She's a little girl. Five years old, something like that. What do you mean you seen mommy? Mommy wasn't kissing uh, Uncle Jody. Uh-huh. I, I seen it. Mommy was kissing Uncle Jody. So this played out in his mind the entire time. But he never said anything to her. He didn't say anything to her initially. But he thought about it. Ah, oh, nah, man. It ain't nothing like that. He probably just, you know, gave her a little hug or something like that when he was on his way leaving or when he first showed up. You know, kids would say anything. He thought about it, but he didn't really put too much uh, stock into it, if you will. So back to the release. They tell him have his ride there. He can't reach Jody. He don't even want to call her and let her know. He don't even let her know. Because he suspects something anyway. Not only did his daughter just, you know, tell him this. But again, he's calling. She ain't answering the phone. When she does talk, it's, you know, it's really a dry conversation. She's not having much to say. She really not coming to visit or whatever. He feels as though something's going on. He don't want to call side chick because he don't want her to know that he's out just yet. He's going to let her know. After all, she will be down there first thing Saturday morning to come and see him. He's going to let her know, but he doesn't want her to come and pick him up. He calls his brother. He's able to reach his brother. Bro, they letting me out. What do you mean they letting you out? They letting me out. The early release, man. Come and get me tomorrow. Nine o'clock at the gate, man. Be there or be square. First thing in the morning, brother, you know, bro comes, picks him up or whatever. And there's a delay in the release. There was something going on with the paperwork. So instead of him leaving at nine o'clock in the morning, he still left that day. But it was like five o'clock in the afternoon by the time he was actually able to leave. It was the, it was a delay with his golden seal. Golden seal is just signed by the governor, which means he's released either on parole or served out or whatever the case may be. His golden seal hadn't arrived for whatever reason. When the parole officer brought everybody's golden seal over, his wasn't included. So now he's heated because he's thinking he's probably going to have to wait until Monday because he's like, I P.O. ain't going to come back and bring my golden seal. I'm going to probably end up being here until Monday or Tuesday or at some point next week until P.O. decides that he or she wants to come back over here. Lo and behold, the P.O. sends the golden seal because you can't fax it. It's a physically it's a physical form that you have to bring. He brings it back five o'clock. He's able to leave him and his brother. They riding. They go uh, get him a phone. Um, goes and gets him a couple outfits. They go get something to eat. They smoke, you know. Big homie had money because not only did he have all these people sending him money, but his wife was so just a beautiful person man inside and out so whenever she would get her income tax by her having you know four kids she's getting back seven eight nine thousand dollars she gonna put twelve fifteen hundred bucks on his account every time well he already had everything that he needed in the penitentiary and he's getting money every week so he would primarily just save that money he might buy him a couple cds or you know different pair of shoes something like that but for the most part he's able to save that money 
So he got like $2,500, $2,600 on his account when he leaves out of the, uh, the prison. Plus his brother, you know, is going to give him some money when he gets out or whatever. He don't tell his brother he got all that money. <laughs> so they go and they kick it for a few hours. Hey, bro, run me by uh, wifey's house, man. No problem. They pull up over wifey's house. They pull up. He sees a maroon uh, explorer in the driveway. Now, she has her car, but it's a maroon explorer in the driveway, and it's it's at the back of the driveway. It's like blocking her car in. Maroon explorer. That looks like Jody's truck. Nah, it can't be Jody's truck, man. Look like Jody's truck, man. So he's looking. That is Jody's truck, man. Jody's at my... He probably just coming over to check on the kids. He probably... Well, hold on, it's Friday. The kids go with my mother. The kids are not even here. My mother picks the kids up on Friday. Oh, hell no. Hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Bro has to calm him down. Hold on, bro. That's the little bro. They're like a year apart, year and a half apart. But chill out, man. You just got out. You can't just go over and, and, and bust in the door and, and, you know, chill out, man. Because it may not even be anything. Let's just sit out here for a minute just to see, you know, they across the street. They kind of like in the cut. Let's just sit out here for a minute just to see, you know, if it's really that. Maybe something he just could be over there cutting the gray, anything. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But in his mind... He's thinking about what his little girl told him. I seen mommy kissing uh, Jody. Uncle Jody. So they sit there. They smoking. They just kicking it or whatever. Probably about 30 minutes passes. He sees him come out of the house. They come out of the house. They jump in the truck and they leave. I wonder where they going at, man. Bruh's not trying to sit there all night. You know what I mean? Bruh's like, look, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's go kick it. Let's go. So they go out. They go kick it or whatever. But the homie, the big homie can't really uh, have that much fun, if you will, because he's thinking about his best friend and his wife. He jumping in the truck leaving. They end up coming back. He convinces his brother to come back. They come back in a couple hours. But at this point, it's late. They're sitting there for a little bit. And I guess everything happens for a reason. Because it's like, how are you all able to just see this? You all sitting there. And then, you see what I'm saying? They just happen to leave while you sitting there. And lo and behold, they happen to pull back up while you all sitting there again. Now, they sit there for a while like a stakeout. They pull back. They pull back in. He sees them laughing. And they're being awfully, awfully friendly towards each other. Awfully friendly. He sees Jody smack his wife on the butt. Oh, he's he he's ready to jump out and 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 really really confront the situation. They go inside. Big homie, he's trying to figure out what to do. His brother's trying to tell him, "Look, bro, let's just leave, man. We can come back or not come back, but you can call her. You all try to figure something out or whatever. I seen what you seen, man, but let's." Let's just leave a situation alone because it's not going to it's not going to end well. You, my bro, you know, do stay strapped. You know, Jody stays strapped. He keeps that heat on him. You know what I'm saying? I got my heat, but I ain't really trying to, you know, really go there. You got to think about the situation, too, bro. He didn't kick the door in. She let him in. You seen what I seen. I seen what you seen. Big homie really ain't, he's not really trying to hear any of that. Nah, man. But then it dawns on him. It dawns on him. What's the one thing that parents always leave behind when they have multiple kids? When they're not at home. An extra key put in a hiding spot. He remembers that this key is always left in a specific place. 
So that when one of the kids comes home and they locked out of the house, they didn't lost their key, forgot their key, or whatever the case may be, ran outside and left the key in the house. There's always a key in this spot. I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going in. That's how he feels. Little bro's trying to talk him out of it. Big homie. He's made his mind up. Rock with me. When he goes in, I guess he's prepared his mind to see whatever he may see. The unthinkable. He goes, sure enough, the key's there. And back then, they didn't have, like, all this ring doorbell and all these things. They probably had it, but it wasn't as common as it is now. Slides the key in. Sneaks in the house. He sees clearly nobody's in the living room. He's figuring that, okay, they downstairs. That's where their bedroom was at, downstairs. He goes down the stairs. He's creeping. It's carpeted. And it's that soft carpet. Now, he's telling me, I've been in their house before, but he's telling me, I've never been downstairs, though, but he's telling me every all the details, so this is how I know all the uh, ins and outs. He's creeping downstairs. He turns the corner. Once he gets to the room, Jody's posted up. He got his shoes kicked off. He's rolling his blunts up. See what I'm saying? He's just chilling. Damn, bruh, this is what this is about. He looks up. It's the big homie. What you doing here, bruh? Now, nah, the question is, what you doing here? This is my crib. What you doing in my crib, fam? So the two of them, they're, they're going back and forth, you know, verbally or whatever. Next thing you know, big homie runs up on him, grabs him, chokes him up. They fight. Big homie was known for choking people out. Known for choking people out. In fact, one situation where he was waiting on this, remember I said his girl, she was supposed to come back that Sunday, well, he was asking her after she confronted him with all the messages. On that Sunday, we were downstairs in the dungeon. No cameras or anything. We playing spades. He's waiting on his girl to come. He got his, his uniform on. It's all creased up. That's what you do when you got a visit coming. You got your best uniform on. It's, you got your creases. You got the lines in your shirts like you're in the military or something in your pants. Then you got your uh the best tennis shoes on or whatever. You didn't got a haircut. You got to shape up. You ready. He's waiting and waiting and waiting. Comes to realize that a wife, he meant what she said. At least this week, she wasn't showing up. We always talk crazy, talk crap to each other on the space table. One dude said something. Big homie just blooped, grabbed him, choked him up. I'm talking about choked him all the way out. I mean, just choked him. I'm come on, bro. Come on, dog. Stop, stop. Leave him alone, dog. Ain't... We just playing, man. You know what I'm saying? So he chokes him. He won't let go. I thought he was going to choke dude all the way out. Bloops all the way out. Let's him go. So like I said, he was known for choking people. He grabs uh, Jody, chokes him or whatever. Jody ain't no little dude either. He's not as big, but Jody's probably about 6'2", 6'1", 6'2", but he's not weighing in. The big homie's 265, 275. Jody might be about 220, 225, but it's a far cry from 265, 275. So as as big homie goes on to explain to me, Jody's, he's you know, he's putting up a fight. Jody got hands. He's good with his hands. But he can't really do anything because he's he's choking him out. So they wrestling. They trying to get free from each other. Well, uh, Jody's trying to get free or whatever. So they get to fighting, you know. Well, all the while, wifey's in the shower. She don't know what's going on. She can't hear anything. She got the music playing. Then, you know, just with the water running. And it, she doesn't hear exactly what's going on. She's taking a shower. The two of them, they down there. They getting it in. They fighting or whatever. So finally... Jody is able to get away. When he gets away, he's able to get to his thing. He got that thing. He keeps it on him. And it's crazy because the big homie knew this. He knew that that nine times out of ten, Jody's going to have that thing on him. I ain't even trying to go through this with you, big dog. It ain't even like that, man. It ain't even what you thinking. What you mean it ain't what you think? I seen you smack my girl on her butt, man. And you over at my girl's house? It's 12 o'clock at night. What you doing over here, this lady? You know, while all, while all of this is happening, 
wifey, Clarice, she's gotten out of the shower. She gets out of the shower. She hears some noise. Like, what is going on? The shower's upstairs, though. Initially, when uh, the big homie came in the house, he didn't realize that wifey was in the shower. He went straight downstairs where he heard the television, seen the lights. She hears the rumblings, but she don't know what's going on. After all, she doesn't even know that the big homie's out. She comes down the stairs. They arguing back and forth. Jody got that thing pointed at him. I'm telling you, man, you run up on me again, man, I'm going to pop you, man. I ain't trying to keep going through. He's cut. You know what I'm saying? He's bleeding or whatever. I ain't trying to keep going through this, man. You run up on me again, I'm going to pop you. Adrenaline's high. Testosterone's high. Emotions are high. Big homie charges him again. As he charges him, Jody lets one off. But when he lets one off, just like the movies, his hand gets hit. When his hand gets hit, he loses the gun. Now, this is the story that the big homie told me. I was not there, so I'm simply narrating this story. But I never knew big homie to lie. Gun flies out of his hand. The gun flies out of his hand, but prior to that, a shot had been let off. Boom! It doesn't hit the big homie. They, they get to fight and they wrestling again. And they fighting or whatever over in the corner or whatever. Clarice walks into the room, wifey. Stop! Stop! What is going on? What is going on? She doesn't even fully know that that's her, you know, that's her boo, her former boo. She don't know that that's Big Dog. She thinks that he's in prison with nearly a year left. She's telling him to stop. She's flashing the light or whatever. Come to find out, that shot that Jody fired off hits her. Hits her like almost in the shoulder area. She's bleeding. She's holding her arm. Stop, please. I've been shot. I've been shot. They immediately, they immediately stop. Jody runs over. He grabs something to try to, you know, wrap her arm up with. Big dog, he just, he don't know what to do. He just kind of sitting there. In his mind, he's thinking, man, I should just go and finish both of them off. He's not very sympathetic and he's not very empathetic at this particular moment. Yeah, he sees wifey bleeding but he also sees that she has on like a little short robe like kind of a a, a satin robe so this is how you was going to present yourself in front of this dude so I know something's going on now my little girl was right all along he's thinking about finishing them both off I'm going to just do them both in I'm going to get that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get that, that gun and I'm going to do y'all both in Something snaps in his mind, and he just leaves. He just leaves. With the mindset, I'm, I'm going to get y'all. They didn't call 911. Jody didn't call 911 or whatever. They didn't had to get rid of the gun and, and do all of these things so that, you know, when the police come, they won't see it. Jody's not supposed to be around. He's a felon. He wasn't supposed to be around a gun either. They leave. They tell the police whatever they tell them. Somebody tried to break in, try to rob us or whatever. I guess the police go for it. They can't really prove anything. Nobody's charged. But he has a real problem. They got a real beef with each other now. Jody feels like you didn't got her shot. But at the same time, big homie feels like, man, you, you going behind my back with wifey? Out of all women, out of my, my wife? She's done with uh, big dog. She's done with him altogether. So now they're not talking whatsoever. But they got four kids together. So at some point they're going to have to talk. They're going to have to communicate and, and figure out exactly what we're going to do. Otherwise, you know, both parties love the kids. Big Dog wanted her back at some, you know, at a certain point. The anger left. She's telling him we we never did anything, okay? Yeah, it was inappropriate for him to do. We've never done anything. He didn't believe it at first. She gives him another opportunity. Everything's cool for a little while. You know, the honeymoon period, the honeymoon stage. But every other argument is about Jody being over there. Then he starts to do what he wants to do. Two or three nights, once again, he ain't coming in. He's with the side chick. And Clarice just gets tired of it. To be frank, and she said, you know what? I'm done. This is not, it's just not gonna work. 
I'm not going to keep going through this same thing with you every other week, every other month. We go through the same exact thing. You keep accusing me of doing things when I was in prison. You was the one that was hollering at all these females on Facebook. You was the one that has a whole girlfriend on the side. You're the one that was doing this. You're the one that's given me an STD in the past. You're the one that's gotten another female pregnant in the past, which she didn't end up having the baby. All of these things, and, and, and you keep accusing me of every little thing that I haven't even done. So I'm done. And she meant that. She meant that. In big homie's mind, yeah, she'll cool off. Give her a couple days, she'll cool off. This time, it wasn't that. She was done. So what happens oftentimes, not with all guys, but what happens oftentimes, fellas, now you can't get her uh, emotion, anything that you say that, you know, she used to would, would just bite on. Now she's not even biting anymore. Now she's not even affected by the, the name calling and, and the accusations. Yeah, okay, I am whatever you say I am. If I wasn't, then why would you say I am? <laughs> That's her demeanor. That's her disposition about the situation. Now it's turned to threats. He's popping up at a job. He knows what time she goes on break, what time she goes back in from break. Remember I told you her name's Clarice. He's jumping out. He's hiding in the bushes. He's jumping out of the bushes. Hello, Clarice. You know, the last person that tried to play me, I delivered with some fiber beans. Now fly on back to your nest, Clarice. Fly, fly, fly. You know, he's going through. He's really, really gone. Like, he's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's really, really gone off this woman. Again, she wasn't biting. One night he said, it's the night, man. This is the night. I'm not taking this no more. I told her she ain't going to have no other dude around my kids because he's randomly riding through to see if there's any cars in the driveway, make sure Jody's truck is not over there, but he never sees anything. But tonight, this, he decides, man. I mean, these bushes. She's going to that upper room, man. The upper room, nigga. The upper room. He decides he's taking her to the upper room, man. I cannot deal with this. I cannot take this no longer. He's waiting on in the bushes. He's waiting. He's waiting. She pulls up. She just happens to be with her mother. He knows that if he does something to her right then and there, he's going to have to do something to the mother. I guess he was, there was still some screws, some marbles in his head. So he let her be. She done went and got an emergency protective order against this dude and everything. That don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. Yeah, it's good to do if, if you have a situation where you have somebody stalking you and threatening you. You definitely want to do it. But to that individual, if he wants you, he's going to find a way to get you. A la Fleece Johnson. If I want you, I'm going to have you. Situation occurred. They went back and forth. He went to the county jail a couple times or whatever for violating the uh, emergency protective order. You go and do 30 days, 45 days. And I guess it just finally set in with him. And he, he just he just understood that he wasn't going to get her back. But at the same time, at the same time, he would still just randomly go through, randomly pop up. He got mad at the kids for a while just because he felt as though, okay, well, you're not going to kick with me. Let it, let old dude handle. Let old dude be the father. Stop going around his kids for a while. Definitely don't agree with that. Under no circumstances do I agree with that. I guess he felt as though that was going to hurt her. One day she gets a call. He's in the hospital. He has a stroke, a pretty serious stroke to the point to where, cause he had like high blood pressure to the point to where, you know, he had to learn to walk again and, and, and things of that nature. He finds out that he has vertigo just as well. So when he gets out of the hospital, he's not quite the same. He's moved in with the side chick, but she don't want to do all of the uh, wifely things, if you will, because he's sick. He can't really get around the way that he once could. He, he he never really quite was the same. Now, during all of this time, he didn't apply for disability and, and got his disability and his back pay and things like that. So he's going to have some form of uh, uh, monies, if you will, coming in every month, even though it's not a lot. But he has something. He'll get housing and, you know, he'll be OK. And his conditions just continue to, uh, they never got better. He liked to get high. He liked to, you know, sniff at, 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 at white girl. And he smoked a lot. And it just got to the point to where his condition worsened so bad. It got so bad to where 
He needed a wheelchair because at vertigo, man, he, he would fall all the time. You know, at vertigo affects your balance. So he ended up in a nursing home. This guy's in his 40s. He's not even 50 yet. He's, he's in a nursing home right now. I went to go see him a couple weeks ago because I didn't even know he was in a nursing home. I just randomly would run into him from time to time. As I mentioned, I used to go over there. We play chess or whatever. But some of the things that he was doing, I just didn't agree with. So I just kind of, you know, just distanced myself. And I went to go check him out in a nursing home. He's lost all type of weight. He's no longer 265, 275. He's lucky to be 200 pounds now. Kind of talks with a slurred speech. He's in a wheelchair. They don't know if it's going to be a long-term uh, situation as far as him having to stay. But that's his present situation. So if you look at this entire story, I guess you can take a lot from this story. It's not just one lesson. It's multiple lessons. I, I would say the main thing that I would take from this story is when you got somebody good, man, don't do people wrong. Man. If you don't want to be in a, if you don't want to be monogamous, if you don't want to be loyal and faithful to that person, man, just get out of the relationship. I know guys, oftentimes we want our cake and we want to eat it too. We want our girl to be faithful to us, but we want to be able to go over here and do whatever we want to do, whenever we want to do it, with whoever we want to do it. And it just doesn't work that way. Some would say this is a form of karma. I don't know if this is karma or not. Because just because a person gets sick and and you can't necessarily just say, okay, well, because he did this to her, this happened to him. Perhaps he was going to get sick anyway. I don't know. I just know that Clarice was and she still is a good one. She was going to ride till the wheels fall off with this dude. And it's just an unfortunate situation. Second thing you can take from this, don't go to prison. This is what prison does. Prison breaks up families, homes. Because there's so much that goes into it. You're away from each other. You get to thinking about different things. Your mind's playing tricks on you. People's telling you. Oh, Jody's over. You know why you can't reach over the phone? Jody's there. You know why she didn't show up? Jody's there. And you laugh it off. Yeah, whatever. But in your mind, you wonder, is Jody really there? You get to thinking about all the things that, that you've done. And you know that she knows that you've done some of these things. Is she getting me back? Is this her way of punishing me? I done seen dudes run off like from camps that don't have a fence or where you can literally just run off. I done seen dudes run off with three weeks, a couple months left until they go to the parole board because they couldn't reach their girl over the phone. Knowing that that's going to be the first place that the people go to to find you. You run off, they catch you 30 minutes later, and you done just added 10 years onto your sentence. And now you're going behind them walls with the lions, tigers, gorillas, goons, and birds. Stay out of prison. Do the right thing. If you got a girl, you got a wife, that's a gift from God, man. Treat her right. If you must have women on the side, man, let her know. Let her know so that you can leave that situation and let her be and let her go and be happy. Don't lose a good thing, man. Real Kens TV. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the Chisana if you're not already subscribed. And be sure to hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action and this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive. Before I go, Clarice ended up being okay. She took a bullet to the shoulder. It kind of just more or less grazed her. Um, and, and that's not to take that lightly. To say, oh man, she just took a graze. You know, nobody should be shot. Especially in your own home. Especially when you... I guess she was somewhat in the wrong, but you know, she didn't deserve to be shot. Nothing ever came about the situation. The big homie, he didn't do anything as far as it ain't like the police could, even if they knew he was there, what could they do to him? He didn't have the gun. You see what I'm saying? And um, that's just where it's at, man. Real Ken's TV.